waiting for the recording. Okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the Endo MetaMask Sync. We're talking about whether to export things from CES. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we covered two options. One, uh, extract things we want separate as separate packages and make SAS dependent on them. And the other option was to export things from SAS directly with the implicit assumption of them becoming uh, globals and having to be hardened. And I wanted to point out that there's a third option where uh, the SAS bundle remains exactly the same. The shim uh, makes um, exactly the same global provisions and we export, like we define in package JSON, additional exports that are separately bundled into an additional file that's a um, tool chain for building SES alike uh, constructs, uh, which is which implies something else could use those tools without even directly depending on SES necessarily. It could use those tools to build uh, whatever uh, SES alike uh, they intend to build. Uh, and that means the current bundle uh, with uh, SES and Lockdown remains unchanged in terms of what it makes available. I mean, so sounds like an argument for just splitting in another package. Like, do, do you see any advantage to keeping it in the, in the same package in that case? So I have um, a, I have a couple of examples that could, whole. I have a couple of examples that could be easily be broken out and one example that maybe can't. Um, so one is the, the transforms, like the evasive transforms. So, you know, when SES evaluate is throwing on things that look like import statements, having that handy transform to make them not import statements is useful to have, um, but it's not exposed externally. So it turns into copy paste. Um, there's that one. There's the, con the strict scope terminator, or at least the constructor for making your own strict scope terminator. Um, and so those can break out pretty easily. And you, even if you keep them in the CES package, they don't need to be the exact same versions that are uh, used by CES internally. So um, there's a lot of flexibility there. Uh, the third one that might be harder to break out and maybe isn't even a good idea is, but it's the grabbing the, the magic lines wrapper format. Um, you know, we can have our own copy pasted version of it in the secure bundler, the thing that's doing the no eval inlining wrapper, whatever you want to call it. Um, it could just pull from the function source uh, of the inside of the, you know, secure evaluator, forget what the file name is, um, or you know, so we can, we can take it from the CES source or we can have our own version. Um, so, but that one is, is harder to break out, obviously. Yeah, in, in I'm fine with that being like copy pasta. That should be copy pasta. It doesn't exist I, in this form. I don't know. I'm not convinced. I actually have been wondering about like making uh, the string of the magic lines a little bit more configurable anyway, uh, for when we don't have uh, some of the scope uh, elements. So, um, it, oh, mm -hmm. it, it seems justifiable in in the direction like where the module harmony proposals are going uh it, it it seems conceivable that evaluators in themselves should should be independent um and could live on their own um so uh so first of all just the the obvious distinction which is um uh Depending on how configurable you make the evaluators, um, uh, you could break everything um, by creating an unsafe evaluator. Obviously, yeah, it, so, it would still have to be safe. <laughs> well, so so do you imagine configuring it under some constraints that enforce that any evaluator you express would still be safe? Or are you providing a power tool that can be that that needs to be used safely in order to create a safe evaluator? I haven't thought this through entirely, but the way I, 
the way I see the uh, evaluator thing is the only thing that's really needed is not escaping to the global. Uh, Anything not, not, as, not escaping into sloppy mode. Um, uh, yeah, so the, the scope terminator is the is what makes uh, makes it safe. Everything else is is optional. Uh, no, the the enforcement of sloppy mode has nothing to do with the scope with the scope term. Oh yeah, 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 and the use strict inside the nested function. Yes, correct. So the uh, the scope terminator in in the outside width and the use strict uh, in uh, in the inner uh, function are the two only required parts of the evaluator. Everything else is like a building block. Um. There's, I think that there's some fruit to be had on that conversation, but I don't think it'll circle it's back not, to them. It, it, it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not the main topic, uh, but I, I think ejecting all evaluation uh, related, all evaluator creation related uh, parts of CES into its own package could make sense. Uh, so I'm going, to, it has occurred to me, just talking through this, that that isn't an option. Ejection isn't an option in general um, because of the underlying issue of having uh, the, there, there's a cyclic problem, right. and that is that within CES, it the things that you build CES out of mustn't be hardened, and the things that we expose from CES must be hardened. Um, so having CES depend on an external package that is hardened uh, is not bootstrappable. <laughs> but um, why does it need to be hardened? I think if it's the same item, it needs to be hardened, you know, like the same instance of the strict scope terminator or whatever, there might be some concern or its other, handler. It's ambient authority. Yes, if it's ambient authority, it needs to be hardened, but it's not ambient authority. It's just going to be makers for these kinds of things, right? right. It would just be excluding makers. So the, the, the things with, um, the things which are which are, if they're made generally available, the the the, the top level things, the things which are, are effectively primordial. But they're not. They, they would just be exported makers from a package. They they would be just regular okay. uh, yes uh, modules. Right. The, the makers need to be hardened. But the makers can't be hardened as. Why at the point that they're created, because uh, I, I don't understand why the makers need to be hardened. Uh, are you making the makers generally available? No, that's a different module namespace. Generally available is a different module namespace to where SAS uses them. Yes, you have to import directly from the module. It is just a maker exported by a module. Okay, you're you're so you're importing. Okay, so you would have to use SAS. To create a module to so that the default module namespace available to CES program to, available with it, the, the module namespace available from within compartments obviously must not include any unsafe modules. And this would be an unsafe module if it's exporting something that's unhardened. I'm not sure I followed. Uh, to be clear, it is also possible for an end user, an application to be configured such that CES would share a reference to the exports of this utility module with other modules in the start compartment. Yeah. This, this, so having it be in the, the import namespace of the start compartment uh, is still in bounds. Um, uh, but now the CES programmer, well, we have to, basically it forces us to take a step we've been needing to take anyway, uh, which is uh, the CES programmer needs to understand that the special powers in the start compartment are both special powers endow endowed by the global of the start compartment and special powers endowed by the um, import namespace of the start compartment making available unsafe modules. Um, and, but, but, and, and then at that point, 
we need to make sure that we're being careful that the import namespace available by default to constructed compartments does not contain any unsafe modules. I see Michael's. Yeah, so what, what I think I'd like to express is that CES itself, if it uses an unsafe module to construct an object and then hardens it as part of, and then uses it internally, then given lockdown, other compartments and not even the start compartment can affect the prototype chain of that constructed object. The start compartment can do it by modifying, it can modify created objects only within the realm of, it hasn't locked down yet. But if the start compartment locks down, then it's okay to have this unsafe module lingering around. It can be used to con construct other similar objects, but it can't get references to the one that, that isn't locked down that, or isn't hardened that SUS happens to be using internally. Right, 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 right. The integrity of CES itself must be protected from misbehavior of, of code running in the start compartment. If it's running, it must be protected from code running in the start compartment after lockdown. Yeah, and okay. that can be done. Okay, but it, it uh, but that requires additional mechanism to do it beyond what we were just talking about. Basically, during lockdown, CES has to protect itself from having its integrity disrupted by anything that code outside the CES implementation, including code running in the start compartment, might do. And we, we also, we, we actually need to, to be careful to um, anticipate uh, a three-part distinction in time with regard to safety. There's um, uh, before CES is loaded, in which case anything that runs before CES is loaded, it's okay for all of CES's integrity to be vulnerable to because that's within our threat model and it's within our threat model because there's no other choice. Then there's the vetted shim case, which is um, code that runs after CES has been loaded and initialized, but before and the repairs. And, sorry, say again? And repairs, load and initialized. Repair. Right, 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 so yes, after the repairs, thank you. So uh, yes. So after the repairs, um, the idea is that we can then run code after all the repairs, but before the primordials are hardened. And that can have access to top level mutable state by virtue of the, the primordials still being mutable. They can even you know, mutate them to put in things that after hardening will be effectively primordials with top level mutable state. But after repairs, it must be the case that the integrity of the CES implementation still cannot be violated by any code that runs after repairs. So I would say instantiating this, this evaluator, for example, for the CES implementation, is something we do at the repair phase, instantiating it, but before we harden the primordial the primordials. We might even do it in the initialization step. Yeah, before repairs, even. Yeah, mm -hmm. if we wanted to. But the 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 it other the, what has access to the maker after locked uh, after, what has access to the maker after repairs. Does it matter? Well, so the, does, if the if the maker is powerless, if the maker yeah. is not is if the maker, um, if the maker is not hardened, and 
mutating the, the maker in a way that is possible to mutate it after repair can disrupt the integrity of no, of course not. Like the, the maker has to be pure of uh, like it, it. It can't like it. It can't be affected. Like somebody else holding the maker shouldn't be able to affect uh, the operation of the maker. <laughs> the, the result of the maker is an encapsulated object that right. does not de depend on any mutable state. So the idea yeah. is that we invoke the maker during initialization, <laughs> retain the results of making, and discard the the maker itself such that yeah. anyone who modifies the maker afterward does not have an opportunity to interfere with cess right and, and the way i see it is that you would provide the maker with the feral uh evaluators uh and and just so and then you, yeah are the are the feral evaluators presumably are not available after repair that's to the, to, to the evaluator uh to, to this close over evaluator, they would be available because that's that's required. To the close. Okay. I they're mean, not... to make evaluators, you need the thorough evaluator. <laughs> right, 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 right. But but they're not. Um, no code running after repair can get direct access to a thorough evaluator, even if they're running before lockdown, and even if or... and even if they're running in the start compartment. I don't think that's true. <laughs> The instance closed over by uh, by CES would because we would have provided it, it, they would have it would have closed over the those evaluators, but nobody else unless they had run before and had access to the thorough evaluators that is uh, similar right. to CES. Yeah, that's what There's I mean by direct access. access. The, There's the, a lockout option that allows the feral evaluators to remain in place in the start compartment. What is that option? Uh, I don't remember the name, uh, but it was it was necessary for Jackworks's use case. Hmm. Oh, Jackworks's use case is the case where no evaluators evaluate. Yes, I believe so. And but having the feral evaluator in place was necessary in order for direct eval to work. Oh no, that couldn't have been it. Oh, I don't remember the details anymore. Okay. This, this, so this exemption under the option is something we really do need to critically look at. Um, Let's talk specifically about the, the case that Aaron is trying to publish, as okay. opposed to yeah. generalizing the question to evaluators. Okay. We're talking I, I, about exposing. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I, I think this is just saying that having a separate module implement a portion of SES or a separate package implement a portion of CES doesn't really in change our threat model or the attack surface. It's just how are we factoring the code and do we are we are we sure that those separate packages aren't closing over any ambient authority or mutable state that others can affect? And we can enforce that through lint rules the same way we uh, have lint rules in a CES package. Uh, right now, we're not enforcing anything through lint rules. Uh, we are in CES package. We're enforcing that no uh, global uh, that basically no globals are used uh, in uh, in the CES package within the CES package, and that uh, no uh, polymorphic calls are happening. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to split a hair here, uh, but this is exactly the area where pedantic hair splitting uh, is is always welcome. Um, it's not enforced because yes. we're, the rule works under the assumption that none of the code the rule is applied to was written maliciously to evade the rule. Yes, I guess you could. Uh, I mean, it's a linter, it's an ahead of time check for sure. But I'm not sure how you evade the no global. So we have not enough we have obfuscation. Not, we have not read it critically under the assumption that someone's trying to write the code that evades the lint rule. So at least with regard to the threat model under which we evaluated it, it's not an enforcement mechanism. Um, to be clear, we would still be the author of both packages. So we're not fully not trusting the source of the package. 
Right. It's okay that it's not enforced. I just want to be very, I just want to be very, very um, clear to not classify as an enforcement mechanism something that's not defending against the um, the 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 malicious um, malicious author threat model. Okay, so uh, Kumavis, um, let's let's continue. I think with with what Calvert suggested, which is, uh, so what is the particular case that you're uh, proposing? Yeah, the the main things I'd like to see are the evasive transforms and the strict scope terminator constructor. Okay, so I understand the um, uh, the transforms. Um, these, uh, you, you'll need to remind me about what's, what is in the strict scope. Uh, uh, first of all, let me just react to the transforms. Um, I think that that the idea that CES itself as a package um, uh, can export things which are themselves uh, hardened, transitively immutable and powerless uh, does cover the transforms. And I don't see a reason to object to CES exporting such things. I, uh, can we define what we mean by exporting? Because I'm uh, not sure. So my interpretation okay. is that we're talking about creating modules that are consumed as modules, not modules that side affect the global. Right, right. That and they're separate export namespaces. So what Kamavis is talking about is different than the one that Cess would be using. Say that again? Yeah. Would they be uh, coming from separate sources or the same sources? Same so source, but... Cess, it, when it imports one of those sources and uses it internally, is in a different module namespace mm -hmm. than an external tool importing the same thing. Uh, I'm not sure. Cess is bundled and the external tool is not. Cess mm -hmm. is not always consumed as a bundle. That is my uh, concern. What I, if we uh, uh, always consumed the tools as a bundle, have a separate bundle alongside the existing one that uh, ships the tools we want to export? That would guarantee uh, these modules are independent instances uh, yeah, as but, uh, opposed to potentially the same instances that uh, CES is internally using, but coming from the same exact source text yeah, but, uh, just uh, from a different point. file. At that point, just make it a separate package. That, that's what I'm saying. Like that's my concern with having it in the same uh, in the same package. Uh, that whether it's consumed as a bundle or not will uh, have impact on uh, on 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 identity discontinuity. Uh, if if you what you're suggesting is forcing uh, identity discontinuity uh, potentially through uh, having different bundles, what I'm saying is that just do that by having separate packages. Having them in separate packages does not necessarily force them to be separate it, identities. It, it doesn't. If but that CES it, uses it those packages, line. then uh, they would be uh, potentially instances of the same thing. It, it shows that you're not relying on, on them being the same. Could we somehow have a pre-harden that you could call before CES was initialized, but it would make it so that when you actually lock down, it hardens all the stuff that you hardened before. So I actually do something like that manually uh, in the internal environments options package, which is, is a, um, uh, which is uh, everything, the uh, environment options has to exist before uh, harden. Um, uh, uh, but what I do is I'm just careful to manually freeze everything that it exports. And I just do that by, by repeated manual application, ap application of freeze rather than something that actually does any automatic traversal. So it is fragile. Uh, 
Uh, let me recap something I've mentioned in chat. CES is consumed as modules, as ESM modules, not as a bundle when you're using it on Node, um, on any version of Node that supports ESM. And that happens because package JSON has a module declaration that overrides the main uh, field such that it uses the original sources instead of using the bundle. I attempted to get it to be the bundle even on Node, but ran into complications in integration with the Gorg SDK, which I no longer recall. So, so let me let me let me check something because it, it might have might be violating a previous assumption. Um, after lockdown, even and code in the start compartment import a feral evaluator from a module internal to the CES implementation? Uh, yes and no. Uh, on versions of Node that support the exports property in their package, Jason, uh, third part, uh, dependent, dependees on CES cannot access its internal modules. Okay. On previous versions of Node, they can. Okay. And the JavaScript standard is presumably silent on this because the JavaScript standard doesn't even understand what a package is. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, which is to say that if you were to publish CES as ESM on the web, there is no such protection. And I see, and we do. Or rather, uh, we, 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 we have we, not told people not to use it on the web. Yeah, that's right. Um, and and an import map might be able to help with that. An import map might be able to recover privacy, internal privacy, but I don't know. Okay. Um, I've, I've certainly well, the simplest way to recover privacy would be to uh, only ship the bundled uh, version as the package to NPM and omit the original sources. Yeah, which would be ideal, but I don't think it would also uh, suck for debugging experience. I, I'm, yeah, the developer experience would suck, and I think that there are other complications. I just don't remember what they are. Okay. Um, but but I agree that it's ideal. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> um. And maybe, and it's it's ideal enough that I'm sure it's worth trying again and actually recording this time what went wrong. Oh, maybe I did record. I wrote a readme.md or a package JSON MD in CES. Yeah, I did write a package JSON MD. Okay. Are there other things which are importable by modules within the CES implementation that? if imported by code in the start compartment could be used to violate the integrity of the CES implementation? Oh, I'm sorry. I just read package JSON.md in the CES repository, which does capture the answer to this question. Dash RESM, dash RESM breaks if you explain. <laughs> and we have not completely gotten rid of dash R E S M. Okay. The Agoric deploy still allows dApps to use resum. In the current CES implementation, when I create a new compartment, what is my uh, import namespace populated with by default? I'm sorry. Um, uh, I probably missed a nuance in the question. I'm going to answer what I can answer immediately. And that is that CES is, and when you import CES, its internal modules are loaded into the start compartments module graph. Okay. When I create a new compartment uh, without saying anything special, and then I run code in the new compartment, what import namespace does the new compartment, does code in the new compartment say? The compartment has its own module namespace. And what is it populated with by default? It is empty. It is empty by default. OK. Hmm. 
yeah so there's no i don't think there isn't a confinement issue with exporting this module there is a cess uh there is the question of vulnerability to code in the start compartment that runs after lockdown and that is the only issue well it's it's that's the main issue there's also the issue of the vetted shins code that runs between repair and lockdown which certainly we're much more vulnerable which you know, we accept much greater vulnerability to that code when code that runs after lockdown but we should still be able to maintain the CES implementation uh, invariance uh, integrity uh, okay. for any code that so, only only after repair. All right. What are we com uh, What guidance are we comfortable giving to Aaron today? Um, I am willing to say right now that ejecting. Um, no, I'm not willing to say that either. Mark, is there any policy that you are willing to? Okay, so here's a policy. Copying and pasting the internals into another in, into any package that you need to use them from is safe. I can, can we do better, Mark? Yeah, so let me let me let me state a position that I don't see the problem with. Um uh and and see if anybody else sees a problem with it which is uh the if somebody imports that somebody is able to import let's say one of the evasive transforms can import it by name from uh quote at endo slash ses unquote and that if one does so one gets the same uh, 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 evasive transform functions as uh, used internally by CES, but by the time they can get them, they are hardened and immutable and powerless. But that is, that, that means opening the CES package to have external entry points. Uh, yes which need to be officially supported, which means we need to produce bundles for them. Uh, or we're saying we're not making th that available to... Uh, so those would not have... An... Okay, no, maybe they don't need a bundle, but... Well, no, they don't need a bundle. Well, let me. I want to extend what Mark says and say, um, concretely, I feel safe if there were a ses slash transform.js that provides a hardened facade into the ses source transforms js which is kept which is retained internally um and the and the reason for that is that on on platforms in which it's possible to protect uh the the internal module to to uh, to to withhold the internal implementation to external dependencies this would put us in a position where the external facade could be hardened by default and harden everything it returns from from the hardened functions without requiring the hardening to occur inside of the internal implementation which can't be hardened because it needs to exist before lockdown can even be called um well it, I'm can't, okay. be, it can't be hardened until lockdown happens so so hard so I don't think that that particular line of inquiry yields fruit because of the possibility of uh, uh because of the identity discontinuity in the case where some things are imported from the bundle and some things are things are imported as individual modules lockdown would not lockdown from within a bundle would not be in a position to harden um the public facade if they if they were imported as separate modules. Okay. Don't we already have a safeguard that says that CES as a whole is only ever instantiated once within an, within a realm? There are a number of there, yes, there's there are two safeguards. Yes. Doesn't that prevent the problem that you're worried about there? No, it doesn't, because the transforms don't depend upon CES. Uh, the, the the I'm sorry the the hypothetical that I thought we were you were criticizing was that the ones that are exported would be the same as the ones that are used internally by CES, 
and if that's the case, and, and they'd be exported from at endo slash cess. So on a modern node, if you were to say in the same application, import cess and import cess sort slash transform.js, mm -hmm. then then both of these, then both of those mo the instantiated modules from both of those imports would share a dependency on cess source transform.js. However, if you were implement, if you were, uh, for example, bringing this into a module system that was being bundled, that is not Node, and uses its own module resolution system, it is possible that you would get separate that that the um, that when you import Cess, you would get the bundle, which closes over a copy of source transform.js. Would that would it not that cause multiple instantiation of CES and therefore fail the safety check? No, because you're only importing CES. Import import CES slash transform.js is completely independent in that particular case. So um I, I wanted to come back to the idea that what if you when you import CES, Harden becomes immediately available and active. And all it does is queues up work for what, what happens when locked up lockdown happens. Oh. So you can use Harden wherever you need to in SAS. I, I I still don't understand the whole fuss about like hardening this this uh transforms. Like why can't we say we freeze the um we freeze the functions that are exported. You can only export functions, and then automatically it will uh, become hardened by lockdown. Yeah, that's and that, that, that which is yeah what I do with the environment options package. Uh, yeah, so what I'm saying is, if we're queuing up work, we can do it thoroughly, but we can do a naive object that freeze implicitly wherever we're going to use harden. Yeah, what Matthew's like, saying is just we can, for the things that we decide to export from CES, we can just freeze them transitively manually ourselves i think that that is more yak shave than i want to ask aaron to take on given that a shallow freeze of all of the functions exported by the transform package would be a sufficient level of hardening um so 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 let's let's take let me propose a straw man as advice for aaron going forward for this particular pull request for transforms that we would allow Aaron to directly export the, the, the mod, uh, select, <laughs> re, uh, to write a transform.js at the top level that selectively re-exports the necessary utilities from within source slash transform.js without any hardening step, provided that source slash transform.js is modified such that it freezes, that it shallowly freezes um, any of the functions that it exports, such that Harden would catch up and freeze its the prototypes of everything it exports. Um, well, presumably these are arrow functions that have no prototype. The beautiful thing about arrow functions is freezing them actually hardens them. Yeah, I'm Wait, okay with that. A narrow function doesn't have a. Uh, they have a prototype. The, the prototype of the neural function is fun, is capital function dot prototype. Yes. Which you're, you're correct that it doesn't, so it doesn't harden it in the sense of making function dot prototype immutable at that instance, but it freezes it in such a way that once function dot prototype and things reachable from that are hardened, then the arrow function just being shallowly frozen has yes. now become effectively hardened. Yeah, I just didn't understand the comment about not having a prototype. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, oh, no, so I, was, I was talking. Sorry, I was talking about dot prototype, not what it inherits from. Oh, yeah. So, so to be clear, um, I liked Michael's idea of deferring deferring the harden work queue to after lockdown. However, um, this smaller scope is that amenable? Does everybody alike like this smaller scoped uh, proposal? I'm disturbed by the notion that importing from 
endo slash transform.js is not importing from the same instance of endo as importing endo. I, that actually surprises me. It I is, think that if that I is import- not, that is not, Yeah, that is not the common case. It is a possible case in the face of imperfect tooling being involved. Oh, so it's a it's a imperfect tooling issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we forbid the tools? We do. No, <laughs> but, but we we it, say it, don't it, use it, don't use parcel. We say don't use right. roll up. No, no. So and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, because uh, we have to say that anyway. Uh, is it the case that our bundling tools don't do not have this flaw? That's that. Yeah, the compartment mapper does not have this flaw. Okay, okay. Uh, in that case, I'm cool with this. Okay, Aaron. Uh, yeah, it, it seems like a reasonable solution to me. Um, okay. as, as for if you really want to prevent people from importing directly, if that was what you were talking about, because of the, the imperfect tooling issue, you could include like a module that always throws an error and then make sure that our bundler does not include that module or something like that. So if you if you import it directly at errors. I don't think that we're interested in doing that at this okay. stage. I, we might become interested in doing that if um, if we manage to get all of Agoric's dApps provably off of dash R E S M and then make a breaking change to the Agoric deploy process such that it doesn't support R E S M anymore. Got it. So uh, right. I might put together case some... you can oh, stop publishing the original sources uh, at all. I, I like that idea too, if we can get that far. Go ahead, Michael. Um, I might explore in a PR a spike around this idea of Harden being able to do stuff before lockdown, because I found mm -hmm. that's the biggest barrier to me using Harden within a vetted shim, is I can't yes. Harden stuff. I have to freeze everything manually, and that's just mm -hmm. really hard. Fragile and tedious, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's worth looking into for sure. Um, and should be relatively easy, right? Because it's just a matter yeah. of just uh, omitting the flush step at the end of Harden uh, until, or or having oh. no flush until. Um, You're going to use the internal queue that's already in Harden. Oh my God. Yep. So bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, we can just defer the flush. Oh my uh, God. Or, Thinking I know how to fix based on what Aaron suggested for the throwing uh, thing, there, there might be a way actually to uh, to make it impossible to import directly, but yet, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so ZB wanted to talk about policies <laughs> and gave him all of five minutes to do it. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> oh, uh, for those who don't regularly attend policy integration, which is to say lava moat on endo is nearing completion. Okay, that's uh, a bit of an overstatement. So this is a sure. working and clean version uh, where uh, only attenuators as uh, packages uh, are supported and you can't use local modules uh, because that confuses compartment mapper a lot in all the implementations I managed to date. Uh, anyway, uh, a quick overview. So here's a manual test case where what I'm doing is, uh, okay, import location is going to be simpler. Uh, I'm importing a location providing uh, options where one of the options is a policy, which looks a lot like the lava modes uh, policies where we have resources which say that um, the this is the main compartment. Uh, it has access to the following globals, can import packages and built-ins. Uh, and then uh, its uh, packages that it uses also have those policies. So you have different endowments for each uh, package. Uh, 
I mean compartment really. Uh, and then uh, what's, uh, what, what's nice about it is that we can also attenuate uh, some things. So we have a built-in FS and we only want uh, exist sync to be available from the built-in FS module. Uh, and we uh, say that we want to use package called ATT1 to attenuate that. There's a list of attenuators at the top, which I might be able to get rid of. Uh, because I uh, was able to uh, limit uh, it to effectively just listing the, the attenuators for one loop that I need to go through. Uh, and this makes uh, the whole thing work where the attenuators implementation is as follows. So it exports a conventionally named function, attenuate, um, with uh, params that come from uh, the policy and the original module namespace. And then it can do anything to the original module namespace based on the parameters. And that's pretty much it. And how this is uh, solved internally is that uh, inside of a link, uh, we have a compartments that's uh, being used to hold the attenuators uh, and it's part of the compartment map uh, as a whole uh, and it gets used um, to uh, okay let me let me reach that from the policy file so we have a function uh, that hooks into the whole process of linking in uh, two or three places where uh, if we're supposed to return an exit module in this case, because built-ins are effectively implemented as exit modules, uh, we attenuate here. So depending on the policy, we can either return uh, the original module or we can pick the attenuator that was specified by the policy and return what it attenuates. And this is happening inside of the module map hook, uh, which is being visited first. Uh, and then if we don't have any, uh, any attenuations to do, uh, we, uh, we will not reach this place. So for actual dependencies, not exit modules, uh, we will not reach the attenuation. Um, I could implement uh, attenuating packages, but uh, didn't see a point yet. Um, so that's, that's how it goes. Um, and the interesting part that happens then is uh, we need to make it work with the archive case. So for the archive, uh, and that's the only place where I actually need uh, the list of attenuators, which I could derive from the entire policy later, uh, is I need to load all of the attenuators so that they get retained uh, in the archive. Uh, what might be controversial, but I personally don't think it is, uh, is the, um, the way that the compartment for attenuators is being introduced, which is here in node modules, uh, where I create a uh, separate um, entry in the graph uh, that just says it's the attenuators compartment. And I use, uh, currently I happen to use a string. I was considering a symbol maybe, uh, but that introduces other uh, complications to the archive use case, obviously. Uh, but uh, the way we're adding this as the last uh, element uh, historically to the graph of packages, uh, this uh, has no potential to be mm, maliciously overridden. So this simple solution should be enough. Uh, and some of this might be unnecessary. So I'm borrowing uh, I'm borrowing stuff from the original uh, compartment where I probably only need the dependencies uh, of that because we're assuming, uh, and I think that's the only option, uh, that attenuator packages are going to be dependencies of the main application. And that's uh, that's the implementation that works and looks fairly clean. 
And now I also have an implementation where there is a separate graph and the entirety of loading mechanism uh, for attenuators. I've been working on it today. I uh, got it to a point where it almost worked for a moment, uh, but there's still a lot of complications involved and uh, the, uh, the areas I have to change, uh, expand, and keep on expanding. So I'm not going to demo it, uh, but I'm going to say there is an option to, uh, to do that, uh, although it's significantly more complex. And the only benefit we're getting from it uh, is that um, we're going to get support for using uh, local modules local to the application for the purpose of uh, attenuating stuff, uh, which is not that valuable to me compared to the complexity I have to introduce. Uh, well, it also and... gives us the piece of, doesn't that also give us the peace of mind that the application's module graph is completely disjoint from the attenuator's graph, such that an attenuator could not be entrained as a dependency of the, of the application and thereby interfered with? Um, yes, but attenuators only make sense uh, with the policy and for an attenuator to be explicitly imported by a package, uh, it would need to be allowed by the policy. I see. So yeah, I stopped cool. worrying about that at some point, although okay. this was my main uh, main point of concern for this uh, solution without the separate graph. Okay, ready to accept thoughts or uh, announce we're going to talk about it async. <laughs> Uh, I can be convinced of this of, of this path. I think. Um, what is the what is the constant for the attenuator package name? Um, I'm not sure. I know what you mean. <laughs> There's an all caps constant for the attenuator oh, yeah. package. Uh, it's uh, it's the name of the compartment. And it's supposed to be somewhere here. Yeah. So I gave it a, a nice visible name initially because uh, it initially it had to be present in uh, the policies, uh, but I was able to eliminate the need of explicitly defining that this compartment should be allowed to import the attenuators, uh, which I can derive uh, on my own internally without uh, without having to ask the policy for that. So a, um, a low fidelity option for ensuring that the attenuators compartment is disjoint well, that the attenuator module graph is disjoint from the application module graph would be to add, say, null string to this attenuator's compartment name, like a slash zero at the end, um, and then forbid the existence of slash zero in any other pack in, a, in any other compartment name. Um, um, I don't think this uh, is an issue unless I'm not aware of the possibility of uh new compartments being introduced to the graph uh at a later time but uh to my understanding well, the, the, the question isn't whether it can be over it, it can't it, you're right that it can't be overridden but the question is whether you could actually willfully depend upon it um like for example to create a stub of a package with the same name and depend upon that mm. and then have that being swapped behind the scenes by the compartment mapper for uh, the attenuator. I don't think this uh, would be possible in the current implementation, but I think uh, we should probably uh, talk about it in writing uh, with specific examples <laughs> so yeah, I can build sure. some tests and to make sure but I don't think that would be reachable. 
yeah i'm i'm interested in i'm interested in landing this and also interested in further work on it so as long as there's a path from where we are to a more perfect solution going forward then i'm i'm fine with this um yeah potentially without uh, visible changes to the outside world other than having to uh put additional stuff into the policy to further control what's being accessed i think going from this solution to the eventual solution with separate graph if it if it proves feasible uh should not be a breaking change great all right we're a little bit over time i think um so yep. um that that's satisfying to me thank you everyone Thanks for staying